My next guest needs no introduction, but is going to get one. He's the author of international bestsellers, including The Strange Death of Europe, The Madness of Crowds, and his latest book, The War on the West. Douglas Murray, let's uh, start with the Biden White House lurching from crisis to crisis, and we'll get into the heightened risk the country faces in the coming months. But first, we've now had three official explanations for Biden's debate performance. He had a cold, he was jet-lagged, and he was apparently over-prepared by staff. Uh, which one of those excuses fits best in, in <laughs> to your mind? It doesn't seem at all as though he was over-prepared. It is pretty amazing that the president put a whole week into preparing for this debate. Uh, first of all, because the, consequence, the consequences were so calamitous. But secondly, because, I mean, isn't he meant to be running the country? Uh, isn't he meant to be the leader of the free world? I mean, it, it's, it's an awful shame that an entire week had to be taken up just prepping for this 90-minute debate. Um, he was obviously not on good form, as all of his sick fans have had to keep pointing out. The problem is, is that they have this, they have this line they've been doing for the last week, which is, you know, he had a bad night. Well, yes, but the evidence seems to be that he has a lot of bad nights and a lot of bad days, and uh, their attempt, the, the 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 sort of Biden court's attempt to pass this off as unusual simply isn't credible. I don't think it's going to wash at all. No, and we've now got the White House declaring that Kamala Harris is the future of the Democratic Party. I mean, one of the reasons why he picked the vice president, President Kamala Harris, is because she is indeed the future of the party. Uh, and he's very proud to have partnered with her and continue to partner with her and delivering an unprecedented record for the American people. Douglas, she even referred to the Veep as President Kamala Harris there. Do you see that as likely? Could there be a move to replace Biden with Kamala now or go to the election with her as the candidate? Um, I mean, here's the thing. Biden himself and Dr. Jill Biden, his wife, are clearly digging in. Uh, there seems to be little doubt mm. about that. The campaign email that's just been sent out to everyone is along the lines of, you know, I was brought up never to quit and I'm not a quitter and Americans aren't quitters, so I'm not going to quit. You know, and when you're on the ground, you pull yourself up, you dust yourself off and uh, you get out into the ring again. Uh, I mean, this is fanciful stuff. Uh, let me put it this way. Mm. Do you really believe, does anyone really believe that three years from now, Joe Biden is going to be in the Oval Office, is going to be able to be there, is going to be functioning as the US president? I really don't think anyone does. So at the moment, you're right. I mean, the, the White House press secretary and others have sort of started to mention Kamala Harris. But they do so, of course, knowing that her approval ratings are even worse than Joe <laughs> Biden's, much worse than Joe Biden's. Um, her likability is, is through down the toilet. And, uh, you know, this is a very interesting, it's not just about these personalities. It's also about the way in which politics is done now in America. You know, it's not rude. It is simply the fact that Kamala was a, div a, a diversity hire because oh. Joe Biden said he wanted a black woman as his running mate. That means that instead of being able to choose from all of the talent in America, he could only choose from the talent within 7% of the population in America. And, you know, as I always say, if you live by DEI, you'll die by DEI. Because now they have this hugely unpopular figure, the vice president, who has no meaningful achievements to her name in her years in office. Everything she's been tasked with, like the border, has not got better under her management. Uh, far from it. And here you have this person who they now cannot pass over because of the, their own rules that they have invented and decided to play by. So... I, I, I mean, you know, it's it's not my concern, as it were, to, to advise the Democrat Party, but I, I would just say, you know, it's clear that Joe's not going to make it. It's clear that Kamala will, would, would lose to anyone, anyone. Mm. What are they going to do? If they're going to do a switch out, they're going to have to do it soon because there's going to be somebody, whether it's Kamala, Gavin Newsom, whoever, they are going to have to introduce this person uh, to the public 
very, very fast. And they don't have a day to lose, in my view. Well, meanwhile, we've got uh, much of the media who feigned shock at Biden's diminished faculties. They're falling back into line. Uh, watch this exchange. And we would invite the president to come here and tell noted. us that directly. <laughs> noted, noted, Kelly. Um, but he's awake. Um, that's inappropriate. As you heard from um, your colleague, the president of the WHA, that's inappropriate. Thank you, Kelly. The that was NBC's senior White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell just telling off someone for suggesting Biden could be napping. And the, she's also the president of the White House Correspondents Association. And let's look at this unwitting admission from an activist journalist at CNN, Hadass Gold, who writes about how Biden's mental fitness could have been better covered. But then there's this tell. She writes, it can be tricky to report on something as difficult to define as a person ageing when his opponent is a convicted felon who regularly lies and has threatened to use the government to go after his political opponents. Douglas, how much culpability does the media have for hiding President Biden's, I would say, fairly obvious cognitive decline? Uh, it's extraordinary, Rita. I watched the debate uh, last uh, Thursday night, and I watched the aftermath of the debate, the the roundup and analysis um, on basically on CNN and MSNBC. What struck me about CNN in particular was absolutely everybody in the studio was talking suddenly as well. Anyone at Fox has for the last few years. Anyone at the yeah. New York Post has for the last few years, uh, for which they've all been castigated. Um, it, it was so strange seeing these CNN pundits suddenly switch as if they'd learned something in the previous 90 minutes that had, that had previously been a mystery to them, a completely hidden secret, a, a hidden fact. How can they, how can they hold their heads up and still behave like this. These were all people who knew and could see everything you and I could know and see, but they decided not to observe it and in actual fact to kick over the traces and to attack anyone who did observe it. And here we are, here they are, with the candidate that they want to use to get Donald Trump away from the White House. And they're only now realizing that their candidate has flaws. I mean, it starts to make you wonder how serious they actually are. And, you know, when they do all this kind of Donald Trump is an existential threat to democracy sort of thing, you think, well, if you really thought that, would you really be running Joe Biden against that man? Wouldn't you have done everything you could to get the most talented team of upcoming, likable, capable uh, young Democrats or middle-aged Democrats. It doesn't matter. Uh, mm. But they didn't. And by the way, this line about, you know, Donald Trump using uh, the law against his political opponents, that kind of stuff would sit a lot better with uh, a lot of American voters <laughs> if they weren't seeing the former president, Donald Trump, being repeatedly put on trial for things that are clearly politically motivated. Absolutely. That is the that is a, the pr golden rule of projection. So much of what they yeah. claim their opponents are doing, they're doing uh, as we speak. And again, if uh, CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, if they're a bit more honest with their audience, they would be aware of that. Uh, you mentioned the Democrats don't have a lot much time to lose. If they're going to replace Biden, they better do it quickly. And one name that's always near the top of the list is Gavin Newsom as, as a re possible replacement. You wrote about him this week in the New York Post and he's the governor of California. California ain't doing too well. Can he fail his way up to the presidency? I, I fear he could. Um, Gavin Newsom absolutely wrecked San Francisco, uh, which should be one of the world's great cities, and it's it's a garbage uh, mm. dump uh, days. Uh, uh, he proceeded to roll out similar policies across California as governor, and has has made most you know much of California into a dump as well. 
uh, he, he he talks all the time about you know the latest stuff about equity and equality and all that sort of thing. And he presides over one of the most extraordinarily unequal states. He's just sent his own uh, a daughter mm. to a six thousand dollar a year private school, uh, and maybe it's because among her own peer group in the state schools in California, you have kids with like thirty percent literacy and thirty four percent numeracy. Yeah. Now, that's just a shameful record. He has no record to run on, but he does have, sadly, the sort of... Well, look, a lot of people fall for this. He People say he looks presidential. He looks the part. He has good hair. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, as we discussed last week, Justin Trudeau has good hair. Doesn't mean he could run Canada. Uh, uh, um, it's the same with Newsom. I, I do fear that he could he could fool a certain amount of people. Um, I think he's a terrible. He would be a terrible choice because any Republican running okay. against Gavin just has to point to California. Um, and uh, and Ron DeSantis, when he debated Newsom uh, uh, earlier in the year, pointed out all of the things that can be pointed out against Newsom's record. But we'll see. I mean, he's definitely one of the candidates that the, uh, that the Dems are playing footsie with at the moment uh, in their desperate attempt to ease out Biden.